Hey guys, so uh, tonight I want to talk to you um, a little bit more about um, a concept that I introduced in another video and that is the concept of the son husband. So the narcissistic mother um, assigns a role to her son, her golden child son, as the son husband. And um, this is a concept that a YouTuber named Ollie with the Narcissistic Resistance channel, um, he's the only one I've ever heard talk about that. So I'm not sure if that's his original idea. I want to say it is because I haven't seen anything like that um, anywhere else. Um, but for me, it rang 100% true. And that is where the narcissistic mother will then treat her uh, son as if he were her husband. And he, she will care for him, and um, I'll get into the specifics of what it is. Um, it's pretty sick and twisted, and it doesn't have to cross any um, in, like incest, physical incest, but it's definitely emotional incest, uh, financial. Um, it's a lot of boundary crossing that should not happen. And so... The reason I'm going to introduce that is because I feel like if there's a, a man out there, um, men who are married to women like this and are getting very resentful and angry and frustrated um, that there's this weird dynamic in their house, um, that their wife is acting strange and is coddling your adult son, um, could be 30 years old, 35 years old, could be 45 years old. Because typically what happens is that these golden children, uh, they don't move out, usually. Um, sometimes they can if they want to, um, but normally they don't want to because the their mother will do their laundry and do the cooking and the cleaning and um, will do everything as if they were married and had a, a spouse. But they don't have any responsibility. So they don't have the responsibilities of a husband, like they don't have to make any money. Um, they don't have to work at all. If they do work, they can spend all of their money um, on video games and stupid stuff, toys. Uh, you, you know, uh, as you get older, you, you still like toys and um, most people have small things that like their hobbies. Um, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about adult men who are 30, 35 years old, 40 years old, living at home with their mom and not working. And there's no pressure. There's no intention to go to work. There's no shame in not working. Um, their mothers just kind of want them to be around to keep them company. And so the way that Ollie explained it was that you know, um, she's got her husband, but typically the husband is the same age or around the same age. But the son husband is going to be around unless something weird happens um, for her whole life. Um, typically, you know, your mom, you're going to, you know, you're going to normally, barring any accidents, um, outlive your parents. So his theory was that they set this up, the mothers do so that they will never be alone. And in exchange for um, coddling these like adult babies, like they, they're kind of like teenagers, like they get stuck in the teenager role. So where you're 13, 16, your mom's still taking care of you, your mom's still uh, doing your laundry, your mom's still taking care of the bills, your mom's still taking care of all those things. But then you also have some independence and some freedom, and you have no responsibility because you're a teenager. So they kind of get stuck in that. And I think it can be very, very frustrating for the husbands um, because as a grown man, you don't want to see your son. You want him to be independent. You want him to have his own family. You want him to have a work ethic. And what these mothers do, what these wives do, is they cut down the husband every time he tries to correct his son and tell him, hey, you can't skip out on work, or hey, you go get up and go get a job. She will fight, and she will turn that husband's good recommendation, and she'll flip in and make it 
uh, turn the father into a monster, and everybody gangs up on the monster father. And um, he really just kind of gets bombarded with negativity, to, and nobody listens. And um, the son obviously doesn't, since he has grown up to be so bratty and irresponsible, he doesn't want a job, so he's going to side with mom on this. And um, she just gets her way, because Jezebel always gets her way. And um, so if you are a husband and you're struggling um, and everybody is trying to make you sound like the crazy one, you're not crazy. Um, the dynamic is, is, is insane. So um, the son husbands, they, in exchange for that, in exchange for all the perks of not having any responsibility, the son has to submit to his mother. So she might let him get away with stuff. She might defend him to other people. But whatever is her line in the sand, like if she has things, he has obligations, but they're emotional obligations to her. So um, it's, I'll give examples because it's, it's kind of like a twisted concept. Um, and it's the son husband. So she will um, basically take money from the household without the father's consent, without the husband's consent, and then coddle this adult child. And it's very frustrating. It's very, very frustrating for the fathers, and they feel very helpless. And they feel very frustrated because it seems like everything is crazy and nobody understands their point of view. I understand your point of view. You want something good for your son. Nobody wants a little mama's boy. Like, that's, it's not like a manly, you know, especially if you're a manly man, but you don't want, nobody wants their son to be like that. Um, but the son and the mom have come up with this arrangement and it annoys everybody in the family. Everybody in the family gets annoyed with it. Um, but you can't stop them because they're happy with that weird dynamic. So I just want to explain to you that it's not you, um, it's them. And then at least you can kind of get your bearings and decide what you're going to do from there. So part of the reason why, um, and one of the things that the, the Jezebel, the narcissist, will say to her husband, if her husband even dares bring up that she's coddling this adult child, she will often accuse him of being jealous of her son, which is very sick. Um, but the reason she brings that up is because a lot of times, if you notice, the narcissist will tell you what they want, but they, they you have to have a decoder ring. I'll explain the decoder ring in another video. But um, basically, they're constantly lying, but they're also constantly twisting. So you can, if you listen without emotion, you can hear what they want. You can hear what they're doing. They will brag about what they're doing, but they do everything in like, you have to use the decoder ring. So if she says, uh, here's an example of a decoder ring, just one real quick one. So I get in a fight with my mom and uh, she's being very cruel to me. And I say, you know what, mom, um, let's just stop talking about it. And she leaves me like, she won't leave me until I'm a puddle puddle crying mess and then she's satisfied and moved on and she will say the most hateful things to me and leave me devastated and then if I get mad um you know like if I say something or to try to defend myself and recognize that she's wrong and she thinks for a second that I might go and tattle on her then what she will do is she'll go to my sister and then she'll go and tell my sister, just in case I go and tell my sister something, she'll tell her what happened. She'll say all the mean things and the ugly things that were said. Uh, if somebody put hands on somebody, if somebody slammed doors, all of that will be described. But she'll change who said what. So if you kind of think of it, I like to think of it like a script, like a play and you have a script, and you have different characters saying different things. So what she'll do is she'll take a transcript, or she'll take that play, and her part in real life was the violent and vile and, and cruel part. But when she retells that story, 
She'll say it that she was on the receiving end. She'll explain it from my point of view. She'll explain how cruel those comments were and she'll go into detail about everything. But she'll go tell my sister that I did that to her. And so she gets two things out of that. Um, one thing she covers herself just in case I go and tell my sister something, which usually, you know, they train you not to tattle on them. But just in case you do, um, the person's going to be like, wait a minute, mom said you did blah, blah, blah. But you're trained not to tattle on her, but she covers herself just in case. So, and then the other part is that she gets um, a little hit of pity. It's like a little drug. So then my sister will be like, oh, Vanessa's so cruel. And then she'll be like, don't, but don't. We have to be patient with your sister. You know, she doesn't mean to be so mean and hateful and vile towards me. So she gets to get pity. She gets to make herself sound like a saint. She gets to brag about what she did, but not get in trouble for it. Um, and she gets to cover herself in case I do ever tattle on her. So it's all very... Uh, premeditated. That's why I'm very, very comfortable labeling the Jezebel and the narcissist as evil um, because it's not just cruelty, spur of the moment cr cruelty. Uh, it is premeditated. Um, so anyway, but um, so lost my train of thought, but the son husbands and what they do is they have triangles. So she loves to create triangles. And the triangle doesn't have to be romantic. It doesn't have to be like she's trying to make her husband jealous with another man. That other man can be any, uh, it could be any other person. So with her husband, it could be her son. And so she will accuse her husband of being jealous of her son which I've heard my mom do many, many times to my dad. Um, so in an example, like I gave you guys the example before, my brother would come home at 3 o'clock in the morning and my mom would start making him eggs. And then my dad would come out because my dad was waiting out for my brother too or he would hear the commotion and he would start to reprimand my brother for being home so late. And my mom would shoo him away and then she'd make this big dramatic thing like, I can cook for him if I want to. Why do you care? Why are you so weird? Why are you so weird? She would say to my dad. Like, it's like you don't, like, it's like you're jealous of your son. Like, what kind of weirdo, kind of sicko is jealous of his own son? Like, that's your son. Don't be gross. And my dad would be like, what the heck are you talking about? I'm just saying it's 3 o'clock in the morning. He broke curfew. He's supposed to be here at midnight. And now you're making him eggs? And um, so then she would twist it into this very gross accusation against him. But she would, she likes the jealousy. She wants people to be jealous. She wants to be important enough for someone to be jealous. And, um, and then so she could coddle my brother. She could prep his food. She can do his laundry. But my dad's doing his own laundry. My dad's prepping his own meals. Um, she would make him a plate, but only if she was cooking already for everybody else and um so he would have a plate ready but she would never call him and say hey dinner's ready but for my brother she would make us go and knock on my brother's door hey go tell your brother dinner's ready go tell your brother dinner's ready um, but she didn't care if my dad knew that dinner was ready um if my dad was hungry and looking through the fridge uh she would just get mad at him and say like oh you're looking pretty fat i don't think you need to eat anymore but if my brother is looking through the fridge, um, she'd be like, oh, are you hungry? Let me make you something. And so um, it's it was just a weird dynamic. So it's not like these women don't know how to properly care for their men. Because they do. They just want a submissive man. So if you guys out there do not submit to them, they get really mad. And one of the ways that they punish you is by being a very bad wife to you, not caring for your just normal obligations that, you know, if she's not working and, um, you know, at home all day and there's no, there was no reason for her not to lovingly care for your laundry and care for your, make you dinner. Um, 
It's not that she doesn't know how to do that, because she will for her son. But only if her son jumps when he, she tells him to jump. And so if he gets quickly out of line, and I think that's why they're so free with their money with these sons, because she likes him to be financially dependent on her. Even if she's taking the money from the household and taking it like the husband goes to work or has a retirement account, she everything belongs to her. I'll make a video about how everything belongs to the narcissist. Your children belong to the narcissist. Um, every decision must be cleared by the narcissist. Um, but as a husband, it's going to be very frustrating for you because you, if you are married to a woman like this, uh, forget about trying to change her. You can't change her. Only God can change her, and that's if she wants to. So good luck with that. Um, but this is for you. Um, this is for you to understand that you are right in wanting to correct your son. You're just in a really bad space. So um, she, if, if this narcissistic woman is married and her husband brings the check home, she feels free to take all the money out of the household account and do whatever she wants with it. And what she'll want to do is give the money to the son, uh, give him spending money, he doesn't have to work, and then he's now financially dependent on her, and she can tell him what to do. He can keep her company when he doesn't want to, but he feels obligated to. Um, and he can give her the emotional validation. I think I mentioned in another video, like my brother, if she made him a plate, he was really good about playing it up. Oh, mom, this is delicious, mom. Oh, mom, they smell so good. And I'm not saying that complimenting some, like some, your wife makes you dinner. And even if it's not good, like it's not fun to cook. It's not fun to clean up. So if someone is taking care of you, like you want to say thank you. But the way my brother was doing it was very over the top. And it was to stroke her ego. And it was manipulative too. So they kind of play each other. Um... So if you're seeing this, if that sounds familiar, if you think that your wife is doing that with your son or if you're, you think your mom is doing that with your brother, um, that's how it's going to be always. I mean, that's kind of hard to... If she truly is like a narcissist, um, you can have narcissistic tendencies. Like I had narcissistic tendencies, but I'm not a narcissist um, because... Once I recognized those, like I was even open and willing to see what those tendencies were and then say, oh my God, that's gross. Let me knock it off. That's not right. Um, but a narcissistic mother will never see it. She, even if she sees it, she doesn't, she doesn't care. She's not going to change. So that's the difference. So these women create their daughters, like they groom their daughters to be that kind of wife. Um, but... If you don't want to be like that, you can, if that's not your true nature, if she's trying to put her nature on you, you can still check yourself and stop. But if you guys are out there and she's acting like that, um, I would call it to her attention first. Give her the chance to change because nobody wants to do wrong for their children. Um, and if you come back with, like, if you get violence back and you get, like, mind your own business, stay in your lane, um, you know, this big traumatic thing, and she's just closed, very closed, then, you, you know, you got to believe people when they tell you what they want and who they are. So that would be my recommendation. But anyway, so the son-husband idea is just an extension of the triangle. So if um, that's... These narcissistic women have no, really have no self-esteem at all. They hate themselves. And, and my humble opinion is that when they aren't bashing you, that they hear their thoughts. Or if you're spiritual, they hear the demons like attack, attacking them and telling them how awful they are and accusing them of all of the things that they did. And so they're in this like, turmoil and I think that the only way that they can get a break from that turmoil is by going and abusing other people then the, all their focus goes to hurting people and then they don't feel hurt they don't feel the hurt so that's why it's like non-stop because they just don't quit we used to call my mom the terminator she just never stops so um 
Yeah, so I would say that if if you're seeing those trends, call it to your wife's attention, um, but you might be built, dealing with something bigger than you were expecting. And that son husband concept from Ollie Matthews, the narcissistic resistance, um, that was very eye-opening for me because that made sense to me. Um, but if you are with women like this, then if you're with a woman like this, then the best thing to do, I would say, is just to emotionally detach and kind of get your bearings. Know that you're not crazy. Know that you're not some sick, twisted guy who's jealous of your son. Like, that's just ridiculous. Um, and just understand that that's part of the overall concept of triangles, which the narcissistic mother loves. So um, she will she will do that to create a triangle. And um, I think I'm going to stop this video here. I'll probably make another one talking about triangles more in, in general. Um, more about the traits in general and then uh, triangles specifically. I can give you guys some examples of how they would do that. Um, but I just mentioned the son-husband concept and somebody might be like, well, what's that? And um, I don't think I covered it properly in the other videos. So if you have any questions on it, if you want to know more, if you want to say, yep, that was my mom and my sister uh, or my mom and, you know, I, they just accused me of being a jealous sister, but I knew that was weird. Yeah, go with your gut. They're weird. They're weirdos. But um, if you have any questions, let me know. If you would like me to go over something again or go into something in more detail, feel free to leave a comment below and I'll, happy, I'll be happy to address it. So I hope you find comfort in this. I hope you find um, somebody's in your corner. I'll be in your corner. Um, you're definitely not the crazy one and you're not the mean one and you're not the uh, vicious one because I know that's they like to accuse people of what they actually are. So it's not you. Um, I hope you guys have a great night. Uh, may God bless you. And don't forget to say your prayers. They help so much. My brothers in Christ, you know how much they help. And anybody who's new to Jesus Christ, if you don't know him, get to know him. He's so wonderful. You can't heal uh, as quickly and as thoroughly as when he helps you. He's going to be a much bigger help than I could ever be for you. So I highly recommend you take a minute and just ask him. Ask him to come and help you. And so everything for the name. In the name of Jesus Christ, I hope this helps somebody out there. Bye now.